What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 51 and we start today's episode off with a game against Atletico Madrid here at El Sardinero. Back in La Liga and of course coming on the back of the very, very, very... Can we say heartbreaking? It's a video game, but it was still heartbreaking. The heartbreaking defeat to Arsenal in the last game. Of course, it was actually a draw against Arsenal. Worth remembering, it was a draw away at the Emirates. One goal each, but of course, over two legs, we did lose by two goals to one. And we got knocked out of the Europa League in the round of 32 stage by the Gunners. So we were absolutely gutted about that. We were deflated by the loss, mentally and physically drained by it. So coming into this game against Atletico Madrid, I would indeed make a ton of changes. Why? Well, it's the key word again, isn't it? Fatigue. So much fatigue for our players meant that coming into this game, we would have a very, very, I wouldn't call it a weak squad, but a weaker squad regardless. So, wasn't really fancying our chances. And of course, this was going to be a rehearsal of the Copa del Rey final, which is coming up next month as well. So, also interesting to see how Atletico Madrid would do against us, how we'd fare against, the, how, how, how we'd fare against them, and, um, you know, who would have the better in the rehearsal. But of course, this won't be the team we'll put out for the Copa del Rey final. But it's still worth seeing how we do and if either team could get one over the other one. But uh, still, a couple of early chances for both teams. And in the 30th minute here, Paul Pogba should have made it 1-0 for Atletico Madrid. Be it a hesitation from Blanco from that corner. The ball fell to him in a good position. But thankfully for us, he couldn't hit the target. And it was still a goal. But in the 35th minute, Atletico Madrid come down left-hand side with Sequeira beating Orfila, crossing the ball in. Pogba flicks it on and Jimenez puts it in and that's a very nice goal by Jimenez as well as it dropped to him there you know sometimes the AI players when they go for volleys they tend to take a touch or two before striking it but this time he just goes straight away first time volley and that is just inch perfect isn't it right into the back of the net there's no chance for Ruben Blanco and it is Racing Santander nil. Atletico Madrid wants to the away side take the lead as expected really and in the 54th minute here they go down the right hand side Griezmann to Gámez who keeps holding the ball chips it inside towards Paul Pogba flicks it on and Jimenez could have made it 2-0 but thankfully for us it's a big save by Blanco and it is still 1-0 and from the corner it's crossed in by Griezmann the Frenchman in to the box seeking out Turan. Arda Turan goes for it wins the header and thankfully for us puts it over the bar and behind for a goal kick so still 1-0 in this game and 11 minutes before the end, a good chance to equalise here and grab ourselves a point. Mitsuhiru Chalmers off the bench going through, taking it around the last man, but that is a very poor finish. And that is one of the worst things about playing with those low-rated players. You know, you may get yourself inside a lot of the time, but if their finishing isn't perfect, if you don't finish perfectly with them, with the R1 and circle or circle on its own, they're probably going to miss the target because their finishing stat is naturally so low. So a frustrating loss, but an understandable one. And following that, we had a, a job offer here an international job offer from Portugal so getting close aren't we getting very close to Spain Portugal right next to Spain but unfortunately it was the Portuguese FA and not the Spanish one and so of course we say no thank you but no we're waiting for the Spanish one as that is the point of the whole series and also we had a scout report as well uh, we signed one of these players to our academy and also this guy as well actually two players to our academy Whitehead Gavan comes in and we'll see how they look after another couple of months in our academy because of course we're into March now so we can take a look at our use called Mafia Report and of course we will be promoting a large chunk of these players in May for the May update. I've had a couple of comments from some people saying that it's sometimes wise to promote them not in May like before May because otherwise the players won't grow in terms of physical attributes and I have noticed that myself as well. Someone pointed out that Ronieri Aguza hasn't grown in physical stats and it's because when you promote a player in May they don't ever grow physicals. I don't know whether that's true or not. I've only seen a couple of comments nothing really on the web about about it after doing some Google searches but maybe you're right I don't know but uh, it definitely does seem that way and these stats you can see there no physical improvements for Ronnie Eri Guzer in this squad report but regardless the May update has wielded me the best sort of looking players from uh, the academy so far in terms of potential and overall not just in this series but in all my series so far this year in FIFA so even if they don't grow in terms of physical attributes it may still be wise to do it in May anyway the worry is that if we promote a winger and he turns out to be really slow that will be a massive massive negative for us for a central midfielder it's not too much of a worry you know pace isn't that important but if we promoted a winger with like 60 pace maximum and throughout his entire career he never grew any pace whatsoever never grew any pace whatsoever never got any pace whatsoever that would be terrible for us but still uh, here's a look at the league table as you can see fifth place with 11 games to go uh, we are eight points behind Valencia in third and two points behind Sevilla in fourth 
I don't think we're going to get ourselves into the Champions League places again for the remainder of the season. We were in them for quite a long time, but because of our really sketchy form of late in the league, we've dropped out and I don't see us getting back there. Um, you know, only 11 games to go now. Anything can happen, but it's so tight at the top and I just can't see us getting into that fourth place finish. But of course, qualifying for the Europa League again is our objective, not the Champions League, so don't worry too much. But of course, we're only three points behind, of, uh, behind uh, sorry, but ahead of Sociedad in seventh place. So there's also a bit of a worry for us that we might not even finish in the Europa League places. If that does happen, it will be disastrous, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. For the time being, we're on course for our objective, and that's the main thing. We take on Osasuna for the second of three games today away from home. First chance fell there, but uh, Andy Capers shot went into the side netting after he healed Hill flicked round the last defender. And from the goalkeeper, it was played forward. Oliver Torres flicked it on. Buena Casa controlled it, got past his man. Really good chance for Sergio Buena Casa here. He shoots, but the goalkeeper saves it, and he can't turn in the rebound either. So Osasuna get the ball away here. And yes, by the way, if you've noticed, there's a change in my voice. It's because I'm doing this commentary the next day, and I've got a bit of a cold. But uh, in the 75th minute, Osasuna had a good chance from this free kick, but the shot went over the bar and behind for a goal kick and it was how the game finished a really boring goalless draw we've had quite a lot of them this season it's been quite frustrating yes the points help yes we're glad to get clean sheets but it's still not good enough when it comes down to the offensive standpoint. We need to get goals, you know, not just, you know, goalless draws, especially because we had our first team playing there. We should have done much better against the side currently sitting in the relegation zone, but that was a really poor game by me, and we missed out on what should have been a comfortable three points, in all honesty. But we take on Barcelona for the third and final game of today's episode here. So taking on the side, currently top of the table, and as things stand, look as though they are going to go ahead and stay top of the table come the end of the season. And of course, Barcelona are a side who, we've beaten already quite a few times since playing them you know we've played them uh, this is the fourth game of the season against them uh, last season we played them four times you know we've had the better of them on quite a few occasions so taking them on here at El Sardinero which has been a real fortress for us I was not surprised to see us take the lead in the 24th minute through Mamadou 2 and Kara. this was one of the weaker sides we've put out this year due to the fatigue reasons we've had to change the side so many times for so many games and to Kara did give us the lead in the 24th minute not a real surprise and I have to say as well this guy with the future fee we have a range of Lazio come the end of the season he's definitely going to be um, he's definitely going to be snapped up as things stand it may only be his third goal in La Liga he's also scored a couple of goals in the Copa del Rey though and he's definitely been pretty bright and a good player for us to play in these backup games so I'm definitely going to use that future fee option come the end of the season but uh, still in the 35th minute Barcelona would indeed grab themselves an equalizing goal and it came through Neymar uh, Neymar right now is currently on course for the Golden Boot winner in La Liga and it's not a real surprise that he did finish that chance today. He was unmarked at the far post and he sneaks his volley in at the near post. I think Ruben Blanco might have done a little bit better because it wasn't struck with too much ferocity and it was at his near post. But, I don't know, you know, sometimes a goalkeeper will save something which you just have no idea how on earth he got gloves to. Sometimes you'll let in a goal like that and you'll wonder why, you know, he's, he's not been able to save that considering his form. But at the end of the day, there was nothing he could do about a second goal. Simple ball inside and Luis Suarez smashed it in. So, maybe Blanco could have saved a goal from Neymar, but he's not saving that one. Suarez, the Uruguayan, makes it Racing Santander 1, Barcelona 2, and the South Americans, Neymar and Suarez, both had goals in this game and that, it, uh, that transformed Barcelona. Barcelona and it turned the game on its head you know we won it up and now they're 2-1 up so a bit of a shame in the 45th minute here Fede's on the ball for us here looking for space finds Tunkari turns his man and shoots and puts the shot just wide and behind for a goal kick so 2-1 was how the game would finish in the first half but in the second half here just past the hour mark Iniesta's on the ball and rolls it out wide towards Delefeu goes down this left hand side he's got a man in the centre he's got Iniesta at the far post picks him out and he picks out the back of the net so Iniesta heads it in and makes it 3-1 to Barcelona and it looks as though there's no way back for us now with just 28 minutes on the clock there was still time to score the two goals we needed to equalize but Barcelona were just looking so strong every time they came forward and I just couldn't defend in this game and again it is worth pointing out we did have a backup side out there against the league leaders so you can't really be too surprised but even so it wasn't good enough for me again and uh, from kickoff though we were trying to respond instantly and get ourselves back in the game and eventually Suarez gives it away here after they win it back David Concha goes down his right hand side and fake shots around Jordan 
Jordi Alba. He keeps on going contra. He doesn't have too much pace, but he's got enough to beat Alba. Gets himself inside, and Jordi Alba ends up bringing contra to the floor, and the referee gives a penalty. So, penalty to us, literally just after conceding Barcelona's third goal. So, if we were going to get ourselves back in this game and have any chance of getting a point, or even possibly three, we would have to score instantly, and we had the chance from the penalty. So, fantastic opportunity here, and it's going to be Tunkara who's already scored one goal in this game against the Chilean goalkeeper Claudio Bravo. So the man on loan from Lazio has a great chance to possibly to, uh, give us a huge momentum swing here. It's Tunkara against Bravo. Can he score against the goalkeeper? No, he can't because... When things are going wrong, they really are going wrong. You know, seriously, I score like 90 to 95% of penalties and I go ahead and have this one saved. So, Racing Santander won Barcelona free and as soon as I missed that penalty, I knew that any chance of getting us back into this game was officially over and it was completely my fault. But David Concha, who won us the penalty, would actually give us a glimmer of hope 16 minutes before time as he slides in there and puts the ball past Bravo, who really should have saved it, but he didn't. And David Concha says to Tuncar, that's why you should have let me take the penalty. So, Concha uh, turns it in and makes it Santander 2, Barcelona 3. So, possibly a chance for us to grab a shock equaliser despite missing that penalty here as it is 3-2. But in, his, in the 84th minute here, Neymar, who scored the first goal for Barcelona, is on the ball. Takes it around David Concha, who just scored for us. Keeps on going and the Brazilian takes it around Concha and crosses the ball in. He's got Pedro at the far post and he volleys it past Blanco and makes it 4-2. So, we had a chance to grab ourselves an equaliser. You know, a good chance for a penalty. We got ourselves a second goal through Concha, but for the most part, it was a case of the away side just showing exactly why they're the league leaders. They had way too much quality for us, and I just didn't perform. And, you know, right now we're in a really bad rut. Again, I think this is like uh, I think this is like four defeats in five games, or something ridiculous like that. It's it's a really poor run anyway. We haven't won in six or seven, and you know Tunkara hits the post there with two minutes to go. We haven't won a game in like five, six, or possibly even seven games right now. It's, it's hard to keep remembering how many games um, we haven't won since. But it's it's been a while. Let's just say that since we've last won, and right now you can see that we are in a massive, massive, massive display of really poor confidence, and it is not doing good for us because right now. With teams below us picking up points, there's a good chance we may even drop out of the Europa League places, and that would be disastrous. So, two big defeats in this game, and a terrible draw against the side in the relegation zone as well. We need to pick it up, and we need to get much, much better. But, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. Excuse the uh, poor commentary change over there, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.